This weekend marks the return of a fighter whom many consider to be the greatest MMA heavyweight in the history of the sport. And it's not that I necessarily disagree with this notion. I just find it a little surprising that after this long of being so inactive in the game, Cain Velasquez is still one of the highest regarded heavyweights in the game. As amazing as his career has been thus far, unfortunately Cain is just one of those guys who's very injury prone. It's an ongoing issue that has plagued his career for many years now and continues to up until this day. And I don't mean to start off being so pessimistic about the return of Velasquez. The truth is, in the days when he was an active fighter, he was one of my very favorite athletes to watch compete. If anything, it's actually quite impressive uh, that after this long of being so inconsistent in terms of being active, that he's still considered to be a top-ranked guy just a single fight away from a heavyweight title shot. If any other fighter on the roster fought just four times in the last six years was making a return, they'd hardly be on the radar. More likely, they'd be buried on the prelims somewhere, or at the very best, one of the very first fights on the main card of a fight night. Not Kane, though. He essentially hung on to that top rank spot all this time based off of his history and the impact he's had in the division. And he's earned it. I suppose you'd have to take into account the fact that the heavyweight division is unlike most other divisions in terms of depth of talent. The disparity between the mid-tier fighters to the elite fighters is a lot greater than it is in other divisions. There's also the fact that there's just a lesser number of elite guys in general, so no doubt that doesn't hurt the cause, but it's impressive nonetheless. And I don't want you to get me wrong, I'm very excited for Velasquez to jump back into the fold. The statures he's gained in this sport isn't for nothing. He's unquestionably one of the most exciting, high-paced, high-output heavyweights to ever step in there. It's just hard to garner peak excitement from fans when there's been zero momentum for so long. But I'm not shutting the door on him being able to pick up from where he left off. I believe he can, but damn, is he ever in for a rough first fight back. Perhaps not stylistically, I think most would consider the matchup to be in Kane's favor, and it's for good reason, but Francis Ngano isn't exactly a cupcake. Dubbed the scariest man in the UFC by Joe Rogan, Ngano is someone who would make any heavyweight think twice before stepping into that octagon. As mentioned earlier, stylistically, this fight favors Kane all day, and on the surface, despite the long layoff, I definitely am favoring Kane to pick up the win here, but anyone who's been following this sport for any amount of time knows damn well that the odds makers and the perceptions we have on matchups can all go out the window when the fight starts, and anything can happen. It just takes a single punch to shock the world, and if there's one individual that has the punch to do just that, it's Francis Ngano. I feel like us fans are desensitized when it comes to what actually takes place inside that octagon. Between the production of the programming and how selective they are and what you actually see and how clean they make it seem, and just the fact that we're so used to watching this stuff week in and week out, it's almost like watching a movie in a way. Like watching something that's not even real. The point I'm making is, as ferocious and as violent as the knockouts that Francis Nagano has pulled off, what he has done is far more terrifying than what it seems from the viewpoint of sitting home on your couch. It's truly a scary prospect to think of that individual coming at anybody with bad intentions. Anybody who's watched a live MMA event and witnessed a nasty knockout knows exactly what I'm talking about. And although Ningano has only been training and fighting in MMA for a very surprisingly little amount of time when you consider how far he's come, and even though his base right from the jump is striking and he's fighting quite possibly the best wrestler in the division, you have to be ready for the possibility that he touches Kane and completely alters the narrative of this comeback. With the power and the speed that Ngannou possesses, it's entirely possible, no matter how unlikely it seems. The long layoff of Velasquez doesn't bow well for him, but I'm not here to suggest it'll be his undoing. I'm just here to say that I'm prepared for anything to happen this weekend when these two square up. I like to reserve judgment on my official pick until very close to fight day just because there are so many variables at play and so much can happen in between now and then. But I have to admit, the fact that we've seen Kane go down to a massive punch before when he was the betting favorite is definitely in back of my mind. But so was the drubbing of Ningano at the hands of former heavyweight champion Stipe Miocic when we entered that grappling realm. I don't know exactly what this fight will produce, but I know I'm going to be glued to the screen this coming Sunday to find out.